Hi, thank you for joining us. Uh, News and Views has a show about how organic is good for us. Again, with Dr. Hector Valenzuela. Thank you so much for coming in on a Sunday again. Thank you. <laughs> organic actually is good for us and is good for the planet. Thanks, thanks, Renee, and thanks again for inviting me to, to be a, a, a part of this show again. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for coming. Yes, so to give some uh, context yeah. to the topic of, of organics, mm -hmm. over the past uh, couple of months, there has been the release of two major reports on, on climate change, uh, which highlight the, the dire consequences or risks uh, for human life on Earth if we don't, as a society, we mm -hmm. don't take uh, drastic action to deal with the aspects of climate change. Uh, so organic farming, farming is part of the uh, dialogue about agriculture. And uh, just as a background, uh, organic farming consists of uh, farming without the use of external inputs. Uh, pesticides. <laughs> pesticides, chemical fertilizers, uh, and relying more on uh, indigenous knowledge and on locally uh, available uh, resources. Mm -hmm. Like using certain cover crops to put different kinds of nutrients into mm, the field. Right. And uh -huh. uh, one of the, the benefits mm. of organic farming is that uh, you apply or add a lot of organic matter to the soil. Uh, so from the perspective of climate change, we're talking about uh, carbon sequestration. Well, uh, so, yeah. So my, carbon sequestration, my understanding is that the plants draw the carbon dioxide out of the air. As part of photosynthesis, mm -hmm. and then right. they, they e uptake the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and then fix it into the soil. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you can also apply it in the form of composts, manure, residues. So you can sequester carbon from the atmosphere mm -hmm. and reduce the impacts of climate change. Mm -hmm. So the carbon goes into the plants and into the soil too, then. Right, right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so uh, there's uh, one, one point that needs to be clarified, mm -hmm. because we talk a lot about the quality of organics, how healthy it is, mm -hmm. how many pesticides, resid the low level of pesticides on it. Mm -hmm. it we need to clarify that uh, organics has become a legislative approach to farming, where the process is described, but uh, organic farming consists of the process that you f the farmers follow. How you farm. How do you farm. It's a mm -hmm. process that is defined as part mm -hmm. of the federal standards mm -hmm. in the United States and in 160 other countries in the world mm -hmm. where organic farming is followed. So organic does not make any claims about the nutritional content of the, of the food, nor about the uh, level of residues on the, the pesticides on the, pesticides on the, on the food, uh -huh. because it's a very difficult, very complex subject. It's very mm -hmm. difficult to make comparisons. Uh, so we're just talking about the process. Mm -hmm. and farmers themselves become organic because they want to farm the proper way with, mm -hmm. with nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. con consumers also like to support organics because they want a good, good style of farming. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, a more healthy style of farming. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, I was really surprised when you were saying in our prep meeting that, um, that there still is a little residue in organic of pesticides pesticide residue in organic farming because there's residue of pesticides in the soil right. or from past farming or um, if somebody's um, pesticide on the wind comes over and blows into your farm there's a little residue of uh, pesticide I was right. surprised by so, that yeah. so even though organics <laughs> have relatively low level of residues like mm -hmm. you're saying Mm -hmm. There may always be some low, very low, low levels of, level. of residues on, 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 on organic food. Mm -hmm. uh, another debate as part of the uh, organic movement uh, is the concept of, well, can we actually expand it and can we as a, a glow, as a world, can we actually consume mostly just organic food? Yeah, some countries have gone 100% organic. Right. Uh -huh. uh, and on the other side, there's a myth that organics, we cannot feed the world only with organics. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, last year there was a publication in um, Nature Communications, a refereed journal, uh, which makes the case that it, it is possible uh, for the world to 
to meet human needs just by mm -hmm. growing organic food. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they indicate that we would probably have to reduce the consumption of uh, meat, of dairy products, and also we would need to waste less food because mm -hmm. we are, right now we're wasting about 40% or so yes, of the food that like we that. right, right. I don't see any problem with that. Right. I mean, organic farming, as far as I know, is the way we used to farm anyway. Right. And we never used to eat as much meat as we do now anyway. So basically, we'll just go back to the way we used to do things and the way we used to eat. And that seems, makes a lot of sense to me anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, so far, organic farming has received very li little attention from the university, uh, from the universities. Mm -hmm. So we have not conducted as much research as, uh, as we could have, mm -hmm. uh, as much research as we're doing with uh, chemicals and pesticides. So if we, the research was behind it, we would be more efficient. And perhaps it, it may be more possible to, for Hawaii to grow more organic mm -hmm. food and also for the world mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to go organic as well. If other countries can be 100% organic, it seems to me that if we wanted to, we could. Right, right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. uh, an another angle is that, uh, with respect to our human health, is that uh, several medical groups uh, have come together and said, we really need to change our diets. Uh, because right now, our diets are based on highly processed uh, food, industrialized food, uh, which often contains high level of uh, pesticide residues. And GMOs. Uh, and GMOs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, the uh, American Medical Association mm -hmm. and the uh, Presidential Panel on Cancer have come up and said we need to move more towards uh, organic type products, mm -hmm. uh, products good. that are free of, of pesticide residues. Very good. Uh, and they have come up and stated that it's not only uh, the food that you're consuming, but you are supporting the entire system, the entire food system, uh, which consists uh, from the way you take care of the soil to how the product is grown, and the transportation, uh, the entire system to the food that gets to the table. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea for us in, in a place to, like Hawaii is uh, how can we uh, take care of the keiki uh, take care of the kupuna by feeding them healthy food, mm -hmm. but at the same time, how can we take care of the land and the soil so, so we can continue to feed uh, future generations? Right, uh, right, especially right. with climate change, it's becoming mm -hmm. more and more difficult to grow land, and in the future, we may not be able to depend on other countries to feed us, mm -hmm. but we may need to grow our food by ourselves. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, Hawaii used to sustain itself. So I don't see why we can't do it again. Right. And wouldn't it also, if we went uh, organic, if we went 100% organic the way some other countries have done, wouldn't that also bring the cost of, of doing organic farming down to a more affordable level? Correct. You know, that's Correct. kind of what I was thinking. Right, right. Uh -huh. So the, the universities, the Langrat universities normally conduct research to improve the efficiency of production, so mm -hmm. farmers can become more competitive. Uh, so I agree with you. If if we did more research at, at UAH at the universities, uh, farming would be organic would, be, would become more efficient, mm -hmm. uh, better tractors, better machinery, better products. Uh, mm -hmm. So it would over time it may become easier to grow products organically. Uh, so the prices of food may go down and it may, may become more more accessible. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's what they always right, generally say about right. How, other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, <laughs> even though organic food in the stores may appear to be expensive, uh, you have to think about uh, later down the road, if you don't get the same diseases that you get from consumption of pesticides, then the overall cost to the community would be a lot lower yeah. because you wouldn't have to go to the hospital right. as often. Your health would be better. Yeah, your insurance yeah. wouldn't be so high. Uh, so mm -hmm. in the long range, it may be more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the medical, American Medical mm -hmm. Association, as they mentioned, the problems with industrial uh, processed food, mm -hmm. they industrial indicate- Industrial ag, <laughs> I call right, it. <laughs> they say uh -huh. that we currently have poor diets uh, which contribute uh, to four of the six leading causes of death in the United States. Uh, so they're saying our current diets are not very healthy 
and we should be moving towards food that are that is pesticide free mm -hmm. and more fresh mm -hmm. fruits uh, vegetables rather than highly processed yeah. uh, food and yeah. GMOs and, uh -huh. uh, and so on. Which goes along with the buy local, buy local produce kind of movement too. Right. Fresher food. Correct, correct. People, consumers would prefer. And um, you know, the other thing that was brought up in, in these things that I was reading that uh, I was really interested in. It was saying that actually this industrial agriculture, um, it's not as nutritious, the produce, the food grown under the, these huge industrial farms are not as, by about 50%, are 50% less nutritious than the ones that are conventionally grown or probably even, you know, and definitely the ones that are organically grown. So what would your comment be on that? Right. Uh -huh. So yes, it, it, it does appear uh, that as uh, mm -hmm. agriculture has become more industrialized. Mm -hmm. uh, so traditionally, uh, there's crop breeders at the university that improve crops. Mm -hmm. And the focus over the past uh, four decades has been how to make the food more efficient for transportation mm -hmm. and quality, for, for storage. Mm -hmm. And nutrition mm -hmm. has been in the lower priority. <laughs> yeah. uh, so <laughs> there has been a trend over the past uh, 40, 60 years. To make prettier produce. <laughs> prettier produce prettier that looks produce. nice, that you can ship uh, yeah. uh -huh. over the oceans, over uh -huh. the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, but the nutrition quality has, mm -hmm. has, has d gone down o mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and in addition to that, there's a focus on application of chemicals, pesticides, oh and mm -hmm. that method of production in itself you end up choosing one variety out of many uh, on a, for production on a large monoculture, mm -hmm. which again uh, turns down the, oh, in the long term the nutritional quality of this food mm -hmm. as compared to the old days where we used to have heirloom varieties, uh, long standing mm -hmm. varieties uh -huh. that were, tro were, were 10 very 10 varieties tough. of tomatoes. Right, right. 25 varieties of right, rice. Right, right. Uh -huh. uh, which were all varieties that tended to have higher levels of, uh, uh, of, of, of nutritional components mm -hmm. on them. Uh, part of it is that plants traditionally uh, have uh, released chemicals to defend mm -hmm. themselves against pests. Mm -hmm. And some of these chemicals are the same products that fight cancer and diseases oh. like antioxidants, oh. uh, phenolics. Mm -hmm. uh, so as we have bred products, we have bred those, materi those chemicals out of, this, oh. of the system. Uh, so uh -huh. our crops have become less and less st strong uh, mm -hmm. ability to, to fight diseases or the pests mm -hmm. because we're relying more on, on, on pesticides. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, organic farming relies more and more on old heirloom varieties mm -hmm. that are stronger and that have more stronger immune systems that to fight uh, pests. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we have looked at studies, uh, in terms of their nutrition profile, they have indeed shown that uh, mm -hmm. organic produce has uh, higher levels of uh, nutritional components oh. as compared to the, uh, to the modern uh, yeah. varieties. Oh, so I'm glad my husband and I now are going organic. It's more right, nutritious right, too. Right. And you know, one thing that people are really concerned about because of all the GMO and the pesticides in our conventional food, they were wondering um, how can you get that out of your system, you know, all of this pesticides and, and the effects of GMO, which causes, uh, besides allergies, and they say um, cancers and other kinds of um, illnesses. Now, how can, uh, how can organic food help us with that? Right. Uh, so I just want to clarify once again that this is a very complex issue. Uh, and when you're conducting research in the field, it's very difficult uh, to make comparisons of uh, this organic product and this conventional product and which is better, which, is, which has more pesticide residues. Uh, this is because, as, as you can imagine, there's so many variables. Uh, there's what variety are you using, what's the temperature, how much rainfall do you receive, the history of the field. So it's very difficult to make comparisons. Um, however, 
when you look at many, many studies uh, or in many locations, you can start to make some um, uh, observations. Mm -hmm. And the general observations that are that, in general, organic products is first, more nutritious, mm -hmm. and that secondly, organic products has less residues of pesticides right. in, the, in the material. More nutritious, uh, less pesticides. Uh, what and, more could you want? And <laughs> right, and, and it's logic because organic farmers don't apply it chemicals to the feed, to the to their crop. Mm -hmm. So it's logic that you would expect lower levels. Uh, so if you if somebody has a, a health problem or and they want to cleanse themselves as you're saying, uh, one solution is to consume uh, more organic products. Mm -hmm. And studies have indeed shown that uh, people that start on day one to consume organic products, mm -hmm. the level of pesticide residues on their, on their bodies declines uh, sharply, mm -hmm. uh, almost to the point where the residues in the body uh, may be neglig negligible. Wow, so you uh, can almost kick all the right, pesticides right, out. Right, uh -huh. uh, So you can imagine that it's the same in the field, so soils may have pesticide residues, mm -hmm. uh, so this is why a lot of farmers convert to organics because they want to cleanse the soil uh, to the topic that we're going to come up with later, which mm -hmm. is how to regenerate the soil mm -hmm. and, and cleanse both the, mm -hmm. the body and the soil from, uh, mm -hmm. from contamination. Uh, yeah. But I, I wanted to mention a, a study uh, that was conducted in terms of the nutrition uh, that looked at a, is a, a refereed study that looked at a, over 240 refereed publications mm -hmm. that had looked at the uh, nutrition of 240 or, articles 240 different scientific publications Stud articles yeah, uh -huh. that had looked at the nutrition of organics mm -hmm. and they indeed found uh, uh, that organic products had about 20 to 40 percent more antioxidant uh, antioxidants in, in the produce mm -hmm. than conventional uh, products. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are again the anti-cancer fighting right. uh, chemicals. Cancer, and wasn't there one study that was saying that um, if you started to only eat organic that something within like a week there was a significant drop right, in right. Um, the amount of pesticides in, you know, in your body? Right, right. Yeah, there was a study that, that, that monitored uh, pesticide residues on the body of, mm -hmm. of, of humans mm -hmm. and they started a, a, an organic diet and the, uh, the pesticide levels uh, declined w within a week. Uh, the, after mm -hmm. a week the, le the level of pesticides were, were very low or, or, or negligible. Low. Uh -huh. uh, so that was an, uh, an, an, an important study uh -huh. uh, that showed the... Well that, that's a good thing to know. I mean you know if you generally eat organic and then you go to a party, you don't have to think, oh, I can't do that, you know, it's, you, you know, you can live a regular life and know that you go back to organics and it would bring you back down to a, a, a healthy level right. within maybe a week or two. Correct. Uh, good to know. Right, uh -huh. right. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so we also were wanting to talk about Regenerative agriculture. Mm -hmm. Regenerative agriculture is mm -hmm. somewhat of a goes along with with organics, and the, and the goal of regenerative farming is to uh, to rebuild the soil, uh, to promote uh, biodiversity farm, mm -hmm. and to maintain the quality of the food that you're producing, and also to maintain the the, the profit uh, for for farmers. Uh, so this is contrasting to the industrial farming. Uh, which just uh, to revisit, uh, conventional industrial farming consists of growing large-scale monocultures. All pineapples. Uh, ten All sugarcane. 2,000 <laughs> 2, acres of tomatoes right. or of, of cabbage. Uh -huh. And because it's a very simplified system, the farmer needs to apply a lot of chemicals to make uh -huh. the product, to, make the, to, make, to be able to get a crop. Mm -hmm. uh, the alternative, the regenerative method, is to use uh, traditional or indigenous systems of Diver diversified systems where you have several tomato varieties, several rice varieties, several crops in the system. Uh, so it's very uh, a very stable system mm -hmm. e ecologically. And, and were you saying also that there are some plants that help fight off the pests? 
Correct. Yeah. So you so use so that if you had a variety. Right. So mm -hmm. you in, you use very ingenious uh, mm -hmm. systems of diversification, mm -hmm. uh, where you may grow a, an, an herb that attracts beneficial insects. Herb attracts insects. Right. <laughs> oh. Fantastic. Or you took, or you grow a crop that repels insects. Oh. Yes. That keeps them away. I heard garlic does that. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, yeah. There's there's many crops. Uh huh. Uh, or crops that simply diversify the system, mm -hmm. so pests cannot build up as much mm -hmm. as if it was just a like an ice cream parlor or everything <laughs> one flavor and you can just jump and. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Right, right. Uh -huh. uh, so you can, you can think of, of the soil as, as a bank uh, where you can uh, continue to add money and, and increase the, the quality of the soil over time. Mm -hmm. And over the years, you're just going to become richer and richer. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the one side, you're sequestering carbon, which mm -hmm. is good for, to deal with climate That's change. That's good for the climate. Uh -huh. And on the, other, on the other hand, your crops become healthier and they require less external inputs less to get, to get, to, to get a, a, a healthy crop. Uh -huh, because the plants themselves are helping be the, right. be the natural pesticide. Right. That's very interesting. Right. Uh -huh. But you have to adopt alternative systems like permaculture or agroforestry, uh, which kind of mimic the biodiversity uh, systems. Uh, which creates ec ecologically a very balanced system. Mm -hmm. uh, when there's good nutrient cycles within the farm, uh, there's internal pest controls. And what is it with the trees? What do the trees add to this? I was reading something about how the trees, oh, anyway. Right. <laughs> Tell, how does the trees add to it? Trees are at an entire new dynamic because mm -hmm. they have a different dimension in space and in, 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 the, in the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, they uh, dig nutrients from deep into the soil, dig water from deep into the soil. Uh, they produce a, a crop because they, they can be a fruit crop, mango, bananas, pa mm -hmm. pa papayas. Mm -hmm. uh, and they add the biodiversity of uh, an entire new uh, uh, profile of insects, beneficial insects. Oh. Uh, so they build the fertility of the soil. When the mm -hmm. leaves fall off, yeah. the leaves are going to contribute to the fertility of the soil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so agroforestry uh, promote systems that are a lot more balanced mm -hmm. as compared again to a, a field of corn, mm -hmm. uh, an open field of corn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, and I was reading this other thing too. It was saying this Rodale Institute, I think it was called, it was saying that if we had more of this organic, regenerative kind of um, farming, that if we had 100% of all of our farms were on the regenerative model, that they thought that a, maybe 100% a of the CO2 emissions could be sequestered on our agricultural farms. Yes, more and more scientific studies are coming up uh, saying that organics is one answer uh, mm -hmm. to climate change. Mm -hmm. And like the Ro Rodale scientists showed, uh, it may be possible for organics to be able to sequester, to take back into the soil mm -hmm. a large part of the carbon that we're releasing as humans into the, into the atmosphere. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't think it would be the only solution, but it would be mm -hmm. an in oh, yeah. in integral solution. One of, yeah, one of right. the very important solutions. Uh, so just to go back to re regenerative, mm -hmm. uh, regenerative farming, mm -hmm. uh, some of the major components is first to, s to stop tilling the land so much. 
because not, every not time dig up the land. every yeah. time we till the land with big tractors, mm -hmm. we're we're releasing carbon. Yeah, and there's soil erosion right. and the soil blows away and right. uh -huh. another angle is to always have your land covered with vegetation mm -hmm. uh, because in with big farming sometimes we for large part of the year the land is just sitting there mm -hmm. and when the land is just sitting there it's exposed to erosion uh, and, and to the loss being soil being uh -huh. lost and just a lot, and it, a lot of respiration and it loses the carbon right. in it right. uh -huh. Uh, again, diversity, uh, vegetational diversity, having a, a diversity of uh, vegetation, mm -hmm. and also the possibility of integrating livestock and crop production. Poop. Which, <laughs> poop, uh, right, right. Uh, uh -huh. Which is somewhat of a controversial topic, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, uh, it has been a part of traditional farming systems mm -hmm. for, for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I was reading also, uh, Anything I know just comes from reading, <laughs> not from doing the way you do, but that, that plants' um, ground cover gives um, nutrients back to the soil also. Oh, correct. Yeah, so that if you have ground cover, instead of leaving it naked, bare to the elements, that actually you're getting more nutrients in the soil, which is, sounds great. Right, right. Different kinds of nutrients. Yes. They're vitamins and minerals. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. So you're basically allowing biology uh, to ca take care of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're relying on biology, uh, indigenous knowledge to create a healthy system rather than rely on applying chemicals, yeah. ex 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 uh -huh. external, external uh -huh. products. Uh -huh. And uh, a paper just came out in a refereed publication uh, from uh, South Dakota, mm -hmm. uh, which indeed showed that regenerative systems uh, were more efficient uh, for farmers. Mm -hmm. They were they provided more ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. uh, the yields were show, somewhat lower, mm -hmm. but the profits were about eighty percent greater mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because of the value of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, the quality of the product was was better. Uh, conventional systems had about ten times as much insect pests mm -hmm. than the uh, regenerative systems, mm -hmm. uh, and the regenerative systems were able to manage pests just with internal uh, mechanisms. Yes, uh -huh. uh, so it's, it's been shown that it can be an effective system of uh, production for farmers. Uh -huh. Well, that's great. It's, it's, and it's good to know that we can make healthy food and that's also healthy for the planet and can help fight climate change. Correct. That is very good news. Right. And um, thanks so much for coming in again, Hector. Really appreciate it. I learn something every time we talk. Thanks a lot. <laughs>